you have your Bibles, go with me to the book of Proverbs, chapter 23, verse 7. We've been talking about how to defeat the devil in your mind. And today, our focus is going to be the battle of the mind, the battle of the mind. Your mind is the arena of faith. Your mind is where the battle takes place. And the Bible says for us to be aware that we have an adversary who has come to kill, steal, and to destroy, but Jesus says, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. For those of us who understand what Jesus has done and we understand the power of God's grace, we are not trying to defeat the devil. The devil has already been defeated. He is a defeated foe. We are not trying to get the victory. Jesus has already obtained the victory for us. Our job is to maintain what he has already obtained. So this is not where, you know, I'm going to wake up this morning and I am going to defeat the devil and get the victory. No, the devil is defeated and Jesus is Lord. Amen? The victory has already been obtained. But we've got to understand there is strategy that's formed against us strategy to try to humiliate and undo. He can't undo what Jesus has done, but to try to, to make a mockery of what Jesus has done, to try to get us to think that it's not done. The greatest fear that a believer can have is the fear that what God promised won't come to pass, the fear of what God has done that he really didn't do it. And so his job, again, to kill, steal, and to destroy, he, 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 wants to, he, wants, he wants you to be miserable in every sense of the, of the word. The way he does it is through your mind, your will, your emotions. Your mind is the, is the center point, the resting place of your emotions. And so emotions will move you in a direction. If they're good emotions, they'll move you in a, in a good direction. If they're bad emotions, they'll move you in a bad direction. And I'm telling you, when you get emotional, if you don't recognize that this is the enemy, enough to at least be quiet. The Bible says a man that can control his tongue can't control his whole body. There is a daily strategy to try to attack you in your mind that is real, that is serious, and that is something we want you to look at today as we look at and evaluate the battle of the mind. I, I subtitle this, Watch Out for the Landmines. The first place that your enemy will attack you is your mind. Your mind is, your, your, your soul is what we call it. Your, we, we've, we have over the years, we thought the soul, we use the word soul, and spirit interchangeably as if they are the same. You are a spirit being. You have a soul. You live in a physical body. That is the tripart being of a man, the anatomy of a man. You are a spirit. So when you leave your body, the real you leaves the body. You are a spirit being. Say out loud, I am a spirit being. Now, you possess a soul. Now, your soul is interesting. Your soul is made up of your mind, your will. See, you have a choice in everything. Your will, you didn't slip up and cuss. You made a decision to cuss. <laughs> your mind, your will, and your emotions. Emotions. Uh, and so, the enemy understands how can I disrupt your soul, your emotions, your thinker, your feeler, your chooser. That's where he wants to make the impact to try to bring destruction in your life. In your thinker, 
your feeler and in your chooser. Your mind is the arena of the battleground for your life's output. See, nothing just happens out here. Your, your mind is the arena. It's a battle for the output. And if he can affect inwardly in your mind, your will, and emotions, he can also affect the output. And so the battle's not won once he gets out here. You cutting somebody ain't winning no battle. The battle has already been won, and you've got to maintain that up here. Up here, he's going to tell you it has not. And up here is where you've got to over and over again say, I already have the victory. I already am righteous. I already am delivered. I already have wisdom. I believe what, this is what it is. It, it is. it is believing that even when you're looking at something that contradicts that, you've got to know how to play this chess game in a sense. And it's up, it's up here. You'll hear things that'll move you emotionally. Hear things that'll anger you. Hear things that'll hurt you. Hear all these kind of things. And you've got to understand that is an attack that has been launched against you. That's where it starts. The fear that starts when you go to a doctor's office and they got bad news and, and they tell you the bad news because this is what they saw, this is what they diagnosed, and everything about you wants to settle for that except you know something in here that he's trying to change that if you'll keep it, it'll change the output. Oh, my God. But if he can stress you in here and that stress begins to transform into the physical body and into your emotions and into all of the outputs that come from what he can cause you. That's the battle. That's the battle. And so you will lose or win in life based on how you handle and fight in the battle of your mind. You will win or lose in life based on the, how you handle and fight in the battle of your mind. Please remember it, ladies and gentlemen. Please remember, nothing just happens. What's already on the outside? Look at the outputs you have already. All of those outputs came as a result of the battle in the mind. Now, so let's go through it. I'm going to give you the warnings of some landmines, some things you need to pay attention to. And right here he says in Proverbs 23 and 7, he says, for as he thinketh, then in his heart so is he, eat and drink, uh, eat and drink, saith, uh, eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. So as a man thinketh, that's what's going to be in his heart. Your heart makeup is going to be made up of what you've been thinking. So the question is, what have you been thinking? What have you been thinking all the time, every day, often? What have you been thinking? That now becomes a part of your heart. Now, once it gets in your heart, that's where, that's the shoot, if you will, that releases it in, the output into life. Let me show you this next scripture. Look at uh, Proverbs 4.23 in the NLT. Proverbs 4.23 in the NLT. He says, to guard your heart. Above all else, guard your heart before all. In, in, in essence, your heart is the soil that'll grow things. Just like you have soil and you can put seed in the soil and it'll grow food, your heart is, is, is the soil that grows the output. Your heart is the soil that grows life. Hmm. Guard your heart, therefore. Above everything else, that's a pretty powerful statement. Above everything else, put a guard over your heart. Now, how are you going to guard your heart? You're going to have to guard your heart by discovering the, the entrances into your heart. How many different ways into a man's heart? Well, there are three. Through the ear gate, what you hear, deposit seed into your heart. Through the eye gate, what you see will deposit seed into your heart. 
through the mouth gate. A lot of times what you say, if it's not lining up properly, will deposit seeds into your heart. Once it's in your heart, it has the potential to grow and produce life. He says, guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Guard your heart above everything else because it determines the course of your life. Next verse. Now, notice what he says here. Verse 24, we're going to keep reading. He says, avoid all perverse talk. Stay away from corrupt speech. What is he saying? A gate, a gate, stuff that's coming through these gates. Go to the next verse. Look straight ahead and fix your eyes on what lies before. There's the third gate. There's the gate. We, we as humans in society, people outside of Christ, they don't think about stuff like this. They're just wondering, how come that happened? And look who gets the blame. How come God let that happen? There's a devil loose. We, 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 we think no big deal. And it's a big deal every day. Eye gate, ear gate, what comes out of your mouth? He said, fix your eyes on what lies before you. Next verse. Mark out a straight path for your feet. Stay on the safe path. Stay on the safe path. Don't get sidetracked. Keep your feet from following evil. What is he saying? All of the stuff that comes through those three gates and they get into your heart will eventually get into your feet and you'll start going that way. Oh, my goodness. You'll start going that way. So what are you to do with this information I'm giving you right now? What are you to do with it? If, with this information... You, can, you should be able to change your outputs. You should be able to change your outputs. Now, of course, you're going to need God's help. Of course, you're going to always need God's help. But at least you're understanding the anatomy, the makeup, and the system by which the strategies of the enemy are being formed and formulated against you to try to take you down. But what he really wants you to do is to not believe it. Ignore what your ears, your eyes, your mouth. Ignore your heart. Ignore the, the different paths. And just think, this is my life. I'm going to live it the way I want to live it. You know what? You are a free moral agent, which means you can make a choice, and you can live it any way you want to live it. You can frankly do anything you decide to do, but it may not be good for you. Are, are you listening to me now? So that's a landmine you need to be aware of. We got to start thinking about what we're thinking about. When was the last time you sat down and you started thinking about what you're thinking about? Think about what I'm saying right now. <laughs> when was the last time you sat down and started thinking about what you've been thinking about. And that's my question. What have you been thinking about? Whatever you focus on the most, that has the most power and strength to determine your output. So what have you been spending most of your thought life with? Somebody says, well, that's what an addiction comes from. Of course. It's whatever you spend your time doing the most, thinking the most, watching the most, that's what you end up doing. This is, what, this is how life works. And God knew it because he created us. Let's look at this second mine, landmine. What are your ears exposed to? Look at Mark chapter 4, verse 21 through 25 in the NLT. Mark chapter 4, verse 21 through 25 in the NLT. I, I, I you know, I, I was all, I've, I've, I've always tried to, well, there's got to be some balance in this. And this is the reason why I believe God had me to teach on this battle before I got, I've got like three more messages in, the, in that year-long series on grace. And the next one is about Christ, the preeminent one. And preeminent means... No one or nothing holds a greater value and position than Jesus. 
Watch this, verse 21 through 24, I think I said. Then Jesus asked them, would anyone light a lamp and then put it under a basket or under the bed? Of course not. A lamp is placed on a stand where it light will shine. For everything that is hidden will eventually be brought into the open, and every secret will be brought to light. Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Then he added, pay close attention to what you hear. The closer you listen, the more understanding you will be given, and you will receive even more. Now, that, that's what, that, before I read verse 25, that's when anything, especially you single people who go on a date, pay close attention to what you're listening to because that person will tell you everything about themselves. Well, I don't understand why I keep drawing the same kind of no good for none man, because you keep ignoring what's being revealed at the very beginning. You're not paying attention to the things that are... Listen, somebody told me one time, if somebody tells you they are a fool, believe them. <laughs> but you sit up there, you're just so, you're just so, oh my God, look at, look at her beautiful hair or... Oh, wow, look at his eyes, and you, you ain't listening. You're not paying attention. Somebody said, is that the devil? I don't know, it might be getting your attention or paying attention. You're not hearing. The man telling you, I'm a fool. And you're like, ooh, my baby's going to have nice hair. Look at that hair. <laughs> he said, there's something about paying close attention to people to where you're going. Pay close attention. Then he said, verse 25, to those who listen to my teaching, more understanding will be given. But for those who are not listening, even what little, they under, uh, uh, little understanding they have will be taken away from them. There is something supernatural that's happening right now as you're seated here listening to what Jesus has to say. He's going to give you more. Some of you, gonna, some of you probably getting more while I'm talking. But when you leave here and you listen closer, you, you, you're going to get more. You're going to understand more. You're going to see some, some illustrations in your life because of how you're listening. And that's what we got to do as Christians. We got to, we, we've got to get to a point where we want to listen to God's Word. Let's listen to God's Word so I can hear it, so I can see what's going on. Yes, I love inspiration. Yes, I love shouting and dancing and and lifting hands and talking in tongues and having a fit. I love all of that as long as you don't turn nothing in church. I love every bit of that. But then there comes a time when you got to listen. If you're going to do all of that and when the time comes to listen, you nodding, dude, you're not, you're, you're not, you're not listening carefully. You, you, you probably see the Holy Ghost right now because you're nodding just so quick. Lord. You don't know what's going on. There is a power that is invested in the person who's careful how they hear and how they listen. And the enemy knows that. And he's, he's hoping you don't listen. Because it's amazing how when you don't listen to God's Word, how open and available you make your attention to the things that are not God. Isn't it amazing you try to teach your kids something, but let them hear somebody cuss on TV. They'll remember that quicker than anything. And your kids be coming around just saying that same cussing word. Blank, blank, blank. Be like, baby, where you get that from? Mm -hmm. and, and some men them know something wrong with it. This is the battle. This is the battle that still goes on today. Now, this is a big one here. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9 in the NLT. Colossians chapter 2. In fact, let's, let's start at verse 6. Let's read verse 6, 7, 8, and 9 in the NLT. Number three, here's a landmine. Beware of the philosophy of men. Let's define philosophy. This is where we left off last week. Philosophy is a theory or attitude held by a person or organization that acts as a guiding principle for behavior. 
a theory or an attitude held by a person or an organization that acts as a guiding principle for behavior. So it's a theory. It's an attitude that a person or an organization came up with. Doesn't have to be truth, but this is what they decided to use as a guiding principle for how they behave. Now, listen to what the Bible says about this. You, you just don't want to adopt somebody's principle. It's like the norms and values of the world. The norms and values of society says, if a whole bunch of people of society think this is right, then it's right because all these people think it's right. Those are the norms and values of society. Society gets together, and they take a survey, and they say, I don't think nothing wrong with this. I think that's fine. And then now it's right, not because it's really right, it's right because the norms and values of society has set this as being something that's right, and then you adapt it. And then when, if you're not here when they did that, then generations down the line, it, it becomes like a norm. Of course that's is wrong with that. Of course that's right. And that's why the Bible says there's coming a time where people will call the things that are wrong right, and then they'll call the things right wrong. I think we're already there on that one, aren't we?